Okay, this is going to be a short video that's just going to um, continue sort of on with the game demo, but I'm going to split out a bit of code just from the inventory system to um, do some button events. Um, it's in GitHub and I've changed to some branches and this is in the button events branch. Um, essentially, this um, game demo here um, is what you see and the um, code for it is fairly straightforward. In our homepage we've got a bunch of stuff. This is all the stuff we're going to be using for our game. Um, I've included a couple of style sheets and we've got jQuery, we've got P5 for our game stuff and P5 Plus. So those are the games. This is for a lot of the stuff we're going to do today and our CSS. And all we have on our homepage is we've got a content ID with the heading game demo, which you can see up top there. We might style that to be centered and make it bigger. And we've got a footer which says game demo buttons, which is down the bottom. And if we have a look at our star sheets, so main sticks, that's a footer, just a bunch of stuff. Um, so it's dark blue, sans serif font, fixed um, fixed at the bottom, setting the bottom to zero, 100%, height at 35 pixels, overflow means that it will scroll if um, we need it to, align center, bit of padding at the top, and font size 12. I did say I was going to change the heading 1. Um, I'm going to go text align center. Um, we want to make it quite large, so we go font um, size maybe 20 or 1.5 uh, 25 pixels we'll change that later um, it's defaults to white I believe or black um, and so we've got that um, font um, weight oh, I'm going to say bold um, have a look at that so Game demo, font size bold. Right, so that's that. Um, we could even, no, we'll leave it at that. Um, so that's a heading one. So we just made a couple of changes there. Um, back on here, we've got our footer at the bottom. And then we've got our main JavaScript where we're going to do a bit of work. Um, we haven't got any buttons in here. So we're going to add a couple of buttons. Um, and then we're going to hook them up into our JavaScript. So to do that. I'm going to create a just a series of buttons, one after the other, and to do that I'm going to put them into a list, so an unordered list, and I'm going to create three buttons. Button, I'm going to say ID equals B1, and this is button 1, um, and because we're in a list, we actually need to put this in a list element. Uh, just list element. And I'm going to just go button one, button uh, two, button three. So button two, control D duplicates, button three, um, finish quote, and button two, button three. And if I live preview this in brackets, so I've got live preview on, um, button one, button two, button three. Now they're right over the edge and all that sort of stuff um, because I have this um, UL. I'm just going to take these out of there. Um, and that's a little bit better. Um, so button one, button two, button three. There's still no gaps or anything around them, but we've got buttons that do absolutely nothing. Um, so, to do something, we need a couple of things. So this is uh, this is our button demo. So we need first thing we need. So just comments one is we need something to do when we click a button. So what are we doing? And two, we need to add an event and alert to the button click. Now, um, 
Hang on a second. All right, so adding event listeners to button clicks. Um, <coughs> okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a function that is going to log something to the console. So I'm going to so console logger, and we're going to log a message. And our message is just going to say console.log message. So that's just the function we're going to do. So this is going to say it's never used and yeah, so that's right. Console. Um, so and we're going to test this. Um, I'm going to say console logger. And we're just testing our message there. So back over in game demo, I go inspect and look at the console. This is a message. So that works. Um, back over into brackets. Um, so that works. That was just a test of it. So I can delete that. So I don't particularly like logging to the console, um, but it's a nice way to test things. So what I am going to do is in our main here, got this, underneath here I'm going to say div id equals message, um, id equals messages, and this here is where we are going to put our messages. So I'm going to create a new style sheet rule set. And we're going to say, no, we're going to say font family is going to be monospace because like that's um, really ugly font. We're going to say font size is going to be 10px, so it's slightly small. We're going to say font um, or color, sorry. It's going to be red. So message is going to be red. Um, enough, and so we've got that. So instead of um, just logging a message there, we're actually going to um, right. So just some interruptions. So we're we're actually going to say we're going to write some. We're going to append or add. Our message to this div container here. So we, we're going to use jQuery to do that because jQuery lets us do some stuff. We could say document dot get element by ID. Um, our ID is messages dot um, inner HTML is equal to message. Um, and if we run that, um, console logger, this is a message. Now, um, jQuery, it's brackets. This should um, should work here. Let's really right up on the edge there. So I am going to, in our CSS, I'm going to go in here and I want to say, padding left it's going to be 20 pixels and that will um, bring it across there. so this is a message so that works um, quite well so I could say that um, the jQuery way to do it actually we'll leave it as this um, so we'll get rid of that so we're just going to Put the message there until we put a second message. Um, so we've done the first one. Click is an event. We're going to add a event listener. So we, the web browser is going to listen for an event, and then when that event runs, it's going to call a function, and the function is going to be this one here. So it's document dot get element by ID. We're going to say button one. We're going to say add event listener. And the event is click, so we're adding a click event. And we want to run a function, and the function is going to be just called console logger with 
button one clicked. So that is the pattern for adding a click event handler. So I'm going to go button one, button two, button three, button two, button three, and let's have a look at that, see how that runs back over in our um, here, button one, so I'll just close that one there, button one, button two, button three. So we can add events to those. So we can have different um, functions. So um, I could, instead of this, I could um, run in here, I could run an alert um, B2. Um, we could run another function, um, change color. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to do some jQuery, so I'm going to do this on button three. We're going to actually let's change the button three to button three has been clicked. Okay, so let's go or change color doesn't make sense. Change B3. Um, so document dot get element by ID b three dot inner um, html equals b three clicked um, that looks interesting um, so change b three so because this doesn't actually take any parameters, we can just say um, the function is change b3, like that. And then we, when we have a look at it, um, button 1, button 2, alert, button 3 does nothing. It's going to throw an error. So let's have a look at why it's throwing an error. Um, it's saying, cannot set property integer of null. Okay, so it's not actually getting the value of the button 3 um, because that is B3, so not a capital, lowercase b. Um, and if I go back to here, button 3 is B3 click. So um, now let's add some variables into that. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add in var click count equals zero um, clicked and I'm going to say plus um, click click count times so we're doing that and we're going to say click count equals click count plus one so now this should actually do something a little bit more interactive back over here um, Unexpected string in line 18. Line 18 is this one here. Always get little errors. Don't need to see that. <laughs> that was, uh, so equals. Oh, I didn't put a plus sign there. So just that was a rookie mistake. So, All right, and I just need to fix up the spacing there in my script. Um, so I clicked space there. So, um, example of buttons, putting buttons into page. So I've got them in my index page. So I'll put, I'll put them there. I could put them anywhere. They could be images. Um, like so in here, I have an image. I might use um, backstab. I'm going to use backstab image. Um, and I'll add a click event to that. So um, in my index.html, under here, image source equals images, icons, action, backstab, dot that. I need to give it an ID. Um, backstab. Um, and I'm going to give it a width of 100. I know these are huge, so I'm going to make it slightly smaller. Um, now, I also know that these images are white, so it's on a white background, so I won't actually be able to see it. So I might need to div um, 
class equals image images just to give it a background color um, so classes in my main.css images and I'm just going to background color is dark slate gray that's lovely color um, let's have a look see in here back into here so I've got the image there now I add an event click event listener to it um, so I jump into my uh, JavaScript document do, document I'm going to use code completion get element by ID and it was b stab dot add event listener click and I'm going to say function is um, console.logger backstab um, and we might or we could actually um, function backstab um, damage equals math.floor um, math. So what I'm doing here is I'm just saying grab the round down a random number that is between 10 and 1. So that's what that will do and then I'm going to go document, um, I'm going to go console logger um, you did plus damage plus damage so that's going to calculate some damage, output it on the console logger, and here I change my function to just backstab. So I can get rid of all that and just put backstab, just same as that one. Um, let's have a look at that. What's that saying? Unexpected token backstab because I didn't spell function properly. <laughs> um, no rude comments, please. Um, and now if I reload that, no error, oh, unexpected token, main line 18. So I go to line 18, you did, oh, instead of that one, um, reload that, you did 4 damage, did 9 damage, so there you go, button 3, button 2, and button 1. So there, that's adding event listeners to a page, look at that, doing damage. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there. Um, I might need to explain this one a little bit more. Um, document get element by ID just returns that particular element in an HTML is the HTML within it. And when we add an event listener to an element, um, we specify the event listener. There's like on mouse. Um, you can get a list of all the event listeners um, from like W3 schools, event listeners, like so you can have a look at um, all, all sorts of different um, event listeners, um, so um, resize, mouse over click, mouse out, um, mouse down, like there's heaps and heaps and heaps, um, and the code, um, it can either run a function, so running that with parameters, so parameter is that, so message, or you can run a function by itself that doesn't do any parameters, and your function can um, use variables, um, and you can actually add things like that. So I'm going to finish that up, um, and hopefully that will show you how to add buttons to your um, pages, a little bit of CSS, um, we did quite a bit of stuff, so HTML, we added buttons in a list. We added an image within a um, div container. Um, we added a blank div container. We got a footer that's fixed. In our main script, we did some CSS work. Not a huge amount of um, stuff. Um, and then we looked at, like, we wrote like 30 lines of code. Um, so there you go. That's it for this one.